Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Winkler here. I wanted to take a minute and I wanted to talk about getting the most out of um, putting your FortiGates, that is to say your Fortinet, Fortinet Analyzer and your FortiGate firewalls into your Q radar. Um, this is part of a series of videos that we're putting out a bunch pretty quickly about getting the really smart devices in your environments like that FortiGate and how easy it is to get it and your Q radar working together. The configuration time is super minimal, right? Um, and that when you stand up your curator and you stand up your FortiGates, you should, within an hour, be getting good data out of it pretty reasonably. But um, let's get our hands dirty here. Um, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Again and again, it comes down to we need to get you the right data, the good data, um, but not enough garbage data that you're not see, being able to see the forest through the trees. And FortiGate actually does a really good job, a little different than what we've seen before, in giving you a lot of solid signal and not a lot of noise if we make these kind of configuration steps. Okay, and I'm going to talk about something here in a minute where I have to differentiate a bit between QRadar and QRock, right? There's a feature called data stores. So in a QRadar, okay, and by QRadar, I mean anything on my hardware, your hardware, uh, on your favorite cloud or on a virtual machine, as opposed to the managed service that's run by IBM, right? So that's QRadar versus QRock. So we can't use a data stores in a QRock. And I just wanted to make sure we, um, we differentiated that before we got started. Okay, so QRadar and data stores, what this means is I can put a license on your QRadar, and this is just a license, it's not hardware, that says any of the functionality not being used up by your security logs, right? And this is measured in events per second. We can use that functionality to grab lower power logs or uh, lower uh, non-security logs, this kind of thing. So if I have um, an event processor and the capacity on it's 40,000 events per second and I'm using 15,000 for my security logs, we can throw a data stores license on that to use the other 25,000 that's not in use to store these non-security logs so you can search a dashboard for them and all that good stuff. One of the reasons we do this is we don't want to give you the, um, the high security price for things that don't run through the security model that are just there for search. And the other is if you want to use QRadar as this kind of system of records where all of your things are, because that's great, is um, this allows you to put what's often a lot higher volume of informational logs in without messing up the rest of your system. Okay, so um, I am not a FortiGate expert, um, but I found people who were. And this was largely, largely, so the FortiGate guys, the FortiNet guys, have done a really good job documenting some of this, right? So I've gone out to their own doc center um, under system settings and event logs. I've also gone out to YouTube and um, the Fortinet guru, right? Um, and this is the video he had. You can use these as search terms. Also, a for this is an effort by the company itself has really well documented this, right? I didn't even have to go any third party sources, but if you're looking for expertise or detail beyond what I'm giving you here, these are what I recommend you go use. Okay, so FortiGate has custom properties that come from NQ Radar because there's a lot of fun things like application category and app type that you can detect in a FortiGate firewall that you can't necessarily elsewhere. There's also an app that was made by the Fortinet team um, that runs inside QRadar. You can pull this down from the App Store so that when you start running traffic from your Fortinet at a QRadar box, um, hopefully you can go grab this app from the App Store first. Um, the custom property should self-identify so you don't actually need to do anything except approve an update, right? QRadar will never update your system without you approving of it. You can set auto updates running so if something is already in there, it will continue to update. But if you want to add something new, you have to say, yes, this is okay, but it's really quite simple, right? So uh, right around the time you start running your FortiGate, tra FortiGate traffic, hopefully before, but it doesn't hurt anything if it's after, you grab these two components and this is gonna do all of that heavy lifting for you, right? It's going to create the charts and the tables and it's gonna get all the data ingestion working as it should be. So now on the FortiGate side, right, their UI is a little different than what we've seen in some of these other products. And this is uh, clicking on the log settings and the system server tab. Um, if we are sending this forward to a QRadar, we do want to use that syslog format. Although we could probably do it in the Ceph, um, there's no need to make this more complicated than it needs to be. And I want to draw attention to the uh, log type, to the criteria, and to the uh, any of the following conditions, right? So we have um, any and we have all. 
And um, I want to set up two different kinds of rules. One's going to be an any and one's going to be an all. But one of the things in criteria here is we're looking for that logging level, right? So in the FortiGate UI, you're going to set up a couple of rules here, some any's and some all's. But once again, this is still under an hour of work. This is pretty darn quick to get done. Okay. So there is a bunch of categories in the FortiGate, right? And this is consistent across the platforms, which is really nice. You want to select the lowest level that you want to send to your QRadar, right? So you don't have to click everything off or write a bunch of rules. You just say, I, and this works in the, the command line or the GUI. Most of the stuff works through the GUI, but if you're doing some complicated stuff, Fortinet does require you to drop to the command line to do some of that, but most of this is, is GUI stuff. Just wanted to let you know that was a possibility. But we want to grab everything notification and higher and send this to QRadar, right? If you want to grab those informational logs because you want this to be system of record, you want to set this up as a separate log setting and you send the informationals and higher to data stores. There's a little bit of redundancy there, but not a lot because the information is going to be that largest volume and we'll store that for you so it's all searchable and all of that good stuff. Okay, so this is one of the two parameters you sent is you want to set this to notification and higher. Okay, and then write a second rule if you want to use this as a system of record and send this to QRadar, but as a data stores thing and not into the security engine. Okay, there are a bunch of event categories. Okay, so this is that same rule and you're going to select event categories. Uh, the thing is, if we're looking for notification information like we talked about in the other screen, we want all of this. This is good stuff coming out of the FortiGate, right? All of these things, notification and higher, all of them should be sent to QRadar. And if you're using it as a system of record, the informational and higher, all of them should be sent to QRadar. Once again, we are at exactly two rules being sent from this FortiGate box to the QRadar box. They're all good categories. I don't want to exclude any of these. Okay, and the last thought is there are security categories inside this FortiNet that you could go through and you could say, I only want certain categories. I don't see a reason to exclude any of these. The, the denial of service, the WAF, the geolocation, any of these things. We should include all of these logs inside your FortiGate. So guys, that is literally two rules, okay, that you set up in that logging interface based on those criteria. And this is going to get all of these smart logs into your um, into your QRadar as kind of a cognizant, as kind of a warning. At no point am I saying you do not need to do advanced tuning later on to get um, to get like those little edge cases so everything reports properly and you're not getting garbage alerts. But to get your basic logging in, to get up and running on day one, this is literally all of the steps. I am Mike Winkler. This is QRadar. Please subscribe to my channel.